When it comes to building or buying a gaming PC, 2025 feels like one of the most confusing years yet. Prices are up, new hardware releases are dropping faster than ever, and there's so much talk about AI integration, DLSS 4, and PCIe 5.0 that it's easy to feel lost. But after building and testing dozens of systems over the years, I've learned that most people overcomplicate this process. So in this video, we're going to break down the 10 steps you need to think about before buying a gaming PC in 2025. All right, let's start with step one, the experience experience you want. Before you open PC Park Picker or scroll through pre-built listings, start with one question. What kind of experience do you actually want? Are you trying to play competitive shooters at 240 hertz? Do you want cinematic single player games at 4K? Or do you just want a reliable system for 1080p gaming, school, and light editing? Most people skip this step and jump straight into part lists, but this one decision determines everything that follows. Your budget, GPU choice, even your case and monitor. For example, if your goal is 1080p 140 Hertz gaming, you can easily hit that level of performance for much less money than most influencers suggest. But if you're aiming for high-end 1440p or 4K gaming, your budget needs to scale with that. Personally, I always start with the display. If I'm gaming on a 1080p or 1440p monitor, I pick a GPU that can comfortably push my most demanding game above 100 FPS. That way, I know I'm getting the experience I want without overspending on performance I'll never actually see. Think about the experience first, not the specs. Now that we figured out what kind of experience you want, let's move on to step two, setting a realistic budget and sticking to it. It sounds obvious, but this is where most people mess up. You start with a budget, then slowly talk yourself into spending more because of a slightly better GPU or case. But remember, your budget should include your entire setup, not just the tower. That means factoring in your monitor, keyboard, mouse, and even your Windows license or other peripherals. So here is how I would kind of break it down. If you're going for entry level, focus on value components, something like the Ryzen 5 7500F or the RX 9060 XT. This kind of combo would give you surprisingly strong performance for 1080p and 1440p gaming, especially if you're playing titles like Apex, Fortnite, or Call of Duty. For the mid-range, maybe between $1,000 and $1,500, the sweet spot is something maybe like a Ryzen 5 9600X or maybe an RTX 5070. This kind of setup would be ideal for 1440p high refresh rate gaming and can pretty much handle every modern title at really high settings. But if you're going for high-end, meaning maybe over $1,600, that's where something like the RTX 5080 comes in. This range targets 4K or ultra smooth 1440p gameplay with every settings maxed out. But keep in mind, after this point, you start paying more for luxury features and small gains in performance. You're mostly buying quieter cooling, premium aesthetics, and convenience, not necessarily a dramatically better gaming experience. All right, so now that you've got your budget set, let's talk about step three, deciding between a pre-built or a custom build. This question never goes away. Way. Should you buy a pre-built or build your own? In 2025, pre-builds have definitely gotten better. There are a few brands now that use proper motherboards, reliable power supplies, and decent cases with good airflow. Some of them are actually great value, especially when you factor in windows and warranty coverage. But here's the truth. The majority of pre-builds on the market are still pretty bad. They often use cheap power supplies, no-name RAM, locked BIOS motherboards, or poor cooling setups. You'll also see cable management that looks messy and airflow designs that throttle performance. Pre-builds are convenient, and for people who just want to plug in and play, that convenience is hard to beat. But if you care about long-term reliability, quiet operation, or upgrading your system later, building your own is still the smarter move. Personally, I still prefer building my own PCs because I like knowing exactly what goes into them. I can pick every component, set fan curves how I want, and get the look I want. But if someone's brand new to PC gaming and doesn't want to deal with parts or setup, a pre-build from one of the better brands can be a solid way to start, just make sure you know what's inside before you buy. Now that you've decided which route to go, let's move on to step four, focusing on balance, not just power. This is where a lot of people go wrong. They'll spend a fortune on a GPU, but then pair it with a cheap power supply, slow RAM, or a weak CPU. That's how you end up with bottlenecks, stutters, or even stability issues. In 2025, balance matters more than ever because today's GPUs are so powerful that the rest of your system can easily become the limiting factor. Your CPU should be strong enough to keep up with your GPU. For example, pairing a Ryzen 5 7500F with an RTX 5060 is totally fine. But if you tried that same CPU with a 5090, you'd see major performance drops. For RAM, always go dual channel, and in most cases, 32 gigabytes is the new sweet spot for gaming and light productivity. Games like Starfield or other AI-heavy titles are starting to use more memory than ever before. Storage is simple. Go with at least a one terabyte NVMe SSD. They're fast, reliable, and a 
affordable now. And don't cheap out on your power supply. A reliable 80 plus gold certified unit from a trusted brand will keep your system stable and protect your investment. When your build is balanced, every part contributes equally. You get smoother performance, fewer headaches, and a system that just feels right. Now let's move into step five, cooling and noise. Cooling isn't just about keeping your temps low, it affects how your PC feels to use. A cool, quiet system feels premium, while one that runs hot and loud can make even a powerful PC feel cheap. With CPUs and GPUs running hotter than ever, airflow is crucial. I always tell people, choose your case based on airflow first, look second. A mesh front panel with at least two intake fans will make a massive difference. For cooling, tower style air coolers from brands like Deepcool or Thermorite offer incredible value. They're quiet, reliable, and easy to install. AIO liquid coolers look great and handle heat well, but they add more points of failure. When I build my PCs, I plan fan curves early, either in BIOS or using fan control software to find that balance between cooling and noise. My goal is always the same quiet at idle, balance under load. There's no point in having 400 FPS if your PC sounds like a hairdryer. All right, next up is step six, future-proof smart, not expensive. Everyone wants a system to last for years, but the truth is no build is truly future-proof. Hardware evolves too fast. So instead, focus on building something upgradable. That means choosing a motherboard with extra M.2 slots and open RAM capacity. Pick a power supply that can handle a future GPU upgrade and make sure your case has enough space and airflow for more power powerful components later. So here's what I mean by smart future proofing. Don't buy a 1000 watt power supply just in case when your system only needs 550, but do buy a quality 650 to 750 watt unit from a good brand so you can upgrade later without replacing it. The same idea applies to GPUs. Instead of chasing the flagship, buy one step below. You'll get 90% of the performance for 60% of the cost. Then when prices drop or new cards released, you can upgrade and still come out ahead. Now that your system's ready to go, let's Let's talk step seven, software and optimization. Once your PC is built, don't just install Steam and call it a day. A little bit of setup goes a long way. Always start by updating Windows fully, then install GPU drivers directly from NVIDIA or AMD, never from Windows Update. Update your BIOS to the latest stable version, enable XMP or Expo to unlock your RAM speed, and adjust your fan curves for quieter operation. I also install tools like Hardware Info or MSI Afterburner to monitor temps and performance. These small steps make your PC faster, quieter, and more reliable, and they don't cost a thing. All right, we're almost there. Step eight, don't forget the peripherals. Your monitor, keyboard, mouse, and audio setup matter way more than people think. A good monitor alone can completely change how smooth and immersive your games feel. If you're using a powerful GPU, pair it with a monitor that matches your setup, like a 144Hz 1440p display. For your mouse, look for something lightweight with a good sensor, and keyboards are personal, but I prefer tactile mechanical switches for typing and gaming. And also, also, don't ignore audio. Even a $50 pair of IEMs or studio monitors can make your games and music sound dramatically better. Peripherals are what turn a good setup into your setup. Now let's wrap up the buying side with step nine, where and when to buy. Hardware prices constantly fluctuate. GPU prices are finally stabilizing, but CPU and RAM prices still swing depending on supply. My rule is simple don't rush. You don't have to buy everything at once. Use sites like PC Part Picker to track price trends and spot deals. Watch for seasonal sales, Black Friday, back to school, and mid-year tech clearances are great times to buy. And don't be afraid of used parts if you know what to look for. Buying gently used GPUs, cases, or even monitors from trusted sellers can save you hundreds without much risk. I've done this countless times, and it's a great way to stretch your budget. And finally, step 10, enjoy the process. Building or buying a PC isn't just about the the end result, it's about the process of learning, tweaking, and creating something that feels personal to you. That's what makes PC building so rewarding. No two systems are ever the same. Whenever I build a PC, I think of it like building a workspace. I want something efficient, quiet, and satisfying to use every day. And even when I'm not gaming, I appreciate the design, the layout, the airflow, all these small details that make it mine. At the end of the day, a gaming PC is more than just a box of parts. It's something you might actually grow with. You'll tweak fan curves, upgrade storage, maybe even swap GPUs, and every change teaches you something new. So don't rush the process or get caught chasing specs. Build something that fits your life, not just the FPS target. So before you buy a gaming PC in 2025, take your time. Focus on balance, upgradability, and the experience you actually want, not what everyone online says you need. Because when you build it right, your PC doesn't just run games well, it becomes something you're proud of every single time you sit down to play. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.